have the great honor of receiving here today at Alcano um, Natalie Tocci, who is the director of the Instituto Affari Internazionale, a leading think tank in, in Italy, um, and who has been here to tell us about the EU global strategy. Well, thank you for coming, Natalie. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure for us receiving you. Um, I'd like to, to ask you about the whole process of the, of the elaboration of the EU global strategy. You've been very uh, closely um, following the process. Um, could you tell us about, the, about this elaboration, about the process itself? Well, I would say firstly that I would uh, divide, if you like, the main constituencies as two. There's the official and the unofficial. Um, a big effort was made in the process of elaboration of the global strategy to engage not only official institutions, but the broader public. Now, by broader public, uh, it's difficult to reach out to everyone, um, but uh, we made a conscious effort at uh, organizing events and involving uh, people across all uh, member states, think tanks, uh, university, uh, NGOs. What struck me very much in the process of elaboration of the strategy uh, was the number of contributions that we received mm -hmm. uh, from Association of Defense Industry uh, to um, the Catholic Church um, to human rights NGOs, uh, climate uh, NGOs, uh, business associations, written contributions to the strategy. Uh, we organized over 50 events uh, across the European Union uh, and obviously also reached out beyond the European Union, from the US to Japan to Australia, uh, closer to home, uh, to Turkey, Tunisia, uh, Georgia, etc. So a lot of effort being put on, if you like, the unofficial side of the story. And then obviously there was the official side of the story. And the official side of the story uh, were discussions, monthly discussions at the very least, uh, with uh, the 28 member states that in the end signed off uh, to every word and comma in the strategy. Uh, very close collaboration with the European Commission. Unlike, if you like, the 2003 security strategy, this was a global strategy because it engaged uh, the European uh, Commission. Uh, so it was global thematically and not only geographically. This was because obviously now with the Lisbon Treaty, uh, we have uh, European external action and we don't have the old distinction between external relations and the common foreign and security policy. Um, so I would say both on the official and the uh, on the unofficial side, uh, there was a reason why it took, if you like, a, a year to write the strategy. Um... Would you say that this fruitful effort that you have already mentioned, um, not only on the official um, side, but also on the unofficial one, um, has been you know, under attack somehow uh, because of recent events uh, worldwide, um, and I mean by this, the Brexit vote and also uh, the vote um, to give Mr. Trump the uh, government or the presidency of his country? Well, I mean, clearly both Brexit and the election of Donald Trump uh, are not good news for the European Union. Uh, I'm not uh, uh, sort of revealing any secret uh, in this respect. Uh, it's clear that Brexit um, holds uh, the, the threat, if you like, of disintegration. It's the first time a member state chooses to leave the European Union. Uh, and it's clear that uh, Donald Trump does not have much uh, time or sympathy uh, for European integration. So that's, those are two facts, uh, if you like. Uh, but those are not facts that necessarily have to undermine either the European Union or in particular European foreign policy uh, and therefore the global strategy. And what I mean by this is that these are also two dynamics uh, that could represent opportunities um, if we are to seize them. It is up to us. So whether uh, Trump and Brexit are good or bad news will depend on us and, and what effect it will have on us. Uh, Brexit uh, offers the opportunity for the European Union to press the accelerator uh, on deeper uh, cooperation and eventually integration when it comes to security and defense. Uh, Trump uh, accelerates uh, that trend. Trump has been saying that he has no uh, uh, time and sympathy for European free riders and that therefore Europeans have to take greater responsibility for their own security. Uh, that is a message that is not new, by the way. It's a message that um, even in the previous administration has been sent over time, but we didn't listen. Mm -hmm. uh, now, maybe it takes uh, someone to say it uh, so uh, in such a direct uh, and brash way as Trump for us to get the message. So all this to say that uh, it will depend on us. Uh, it can be maybe the necessary stimulus to get our act together when it comes to foreign and security policy. Well, thank you so much for being here, Natalie, and safe trip back. Thank you.